Hey guys, this is Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I passed the recurrent part 107 test and passed with an 85%. So I'll be going over how I studied for the test, what resources I used, I'll be going over the notes that I took for the test, I'll also be going over taking the test itself, so scheduling the test and going to the testing center and taking your test, and then finally I'll be going over some of the questions that tripped me up to help you guys out when you're taking your test to make sure that you pass with an even better score than me. So with that being said, I don't wanna make this intro too long, so let's get right into the video. Okay, so of course before going to take the test, you do need to go and actually register to take the test. There are a couple ways of doing this. Now the FAA is starting to try and roll out an online form where you're able to go and register to take these tests yourself, but Right now, the current date, it only really is best to go and call into these centers to schedule tests, so I just did that because it just makes it easier. So you can do that by going and just Googling FAA Part 107 Testing Centers, and you will get a couple of different websites that will show long lists of different testing centers that are available near you. And once you find one, all you gotta do is you gotta call them up and schedule your test. So I'm gonna do that right now, and I'm gonna call the nearest testing center to me, which is New Horizons Aviation in Goshen, Indiana. And so, uh, yeah, let's hit them up. Good afternoon, New Horizons Aviation. This is Connie, may I help you? Hi, I'm calling to see if I could go about setting up a recurrent Part 107 test tomorrow, if you're offering it. Okay, the only um, available time would be in the morning at 10, would that work? Yeah, I mean, if that's open, that's fine with me. This one's going to be just a little bit different. Okay. Um, we call this the UGR, and um, instead of 60 questions, it will be 40, mm -hmm. and instead of two hours, it'll you'll have an hour and a half. You'll still need a 70% or better. What we'll need from you is uh, your driver's license. And also a copy, we need to make a copy of your um, your card that shows that you have the... Um, uh, Part 107? The, the unmanned, right. Yes, okay, all, all right. right. So just bring that, those two items in, and um, we're going to make copies of both, and then I think that'll be everything. So um, may I get a couple pieces of information from you so I can get you pre-registered before tomorrow? Yep. Is that all right? And this will be the first time that you're taking your recurrent test, mm -hmm. correct? I'm going to schedule you then for 10 o'clock. You'll be taking the unmanned aircraft recurrent. Schedule the test. You are pre-registered. A couple reminders. Um, you are able to take a calculator back with you. There will be one online, so you can use the one online if you want, but a lot of people like to have the one in hand. The cost of the test will be $160. We will supply you with two sharpened pencils. Um, we'll supply you with a plastic overlay that you'll use inside the booklet instead of writing inside the booklet. Okay. And we will also give you that supplement or booklet to refer to. I think that's it. Bye-bye. So there we go. Now that that has been scheduled out, that was relatively easy. The lady on the other end, she didn't sound super uh, knowledgeable about this herself. She's probably just an employee that works there, so that's fine. With that being said, now that we are all set up, I guess I will wait until tomorrow and I'll get in and update you once I'm heading to the testing center. So. See you tomorrow. So I'm on my way to the testing center right now and to answer a couple of questions about the test that most people taking the recurrent may want to know, the amount of questions, the makeup of them is different. So there are no weather questions and there are no questions in another category that I can't exactly recall off the top of my head right now. So if you had any issues with reading METARs, they weren't really that difficult, but if you did, then there are no longer any of those. Am I nervous? Not really. I feel pretty prepared. I have taken this before with the you know initial part 107 test, so I'm not too worried there. And the fact that it is shorter is great. And also, something I forgot to mention is you still only need to get a 70%. In the FAA's eyes, you either get a passing or you get a failing. That means on this recurrent part 107 test, you could miss 12 questions and still pass, which is crazy. That is a pretty large majority of the questions out of 40. So it is nice, of course. I'm not really complaining. I just find it odd that they still just accept a 70%. So I'm really not too worried. So all I'm doing to prepare right now is just reading over my part 107 notes 
and it's going pretty well. I'm almost halfway. Um, I probably should go in soon because it is 941. So I should get going in just to make sure that they get all my information and stuff before taking the test. I probably will get back to you as soon as I have taken the test. So I guess I'll see you after I'm done taking my test. Hopefully I'm coming back with a positive result. A little longer than a few minutes later. Leaving the testing center now and I passed with 85%, which is a little bit lower than I was expecting, but there were a couple questions that caught me up, such as, when should you update the FAA when your mailing address has changed? I have no clue. The options were like 30, 60, and 90 days. I've never heard of that question in my life, so I had zero clue on that question. Also, there was a question about Class D airspace. When it closes, what happens to the airspace? I think the options were like, nothing happens to the airspace. And then another option was like, it changes to Class E airspace. And then another option I cannot remember. And then there was like four others that I just got caught up on. But with that being done now, I am all set to basically, there's not really much I do now other than if I wanted to get another part 107 certificate, like a new card, you can go online and get reissued a new card, but you don't automatically get a new one like you would as if you just took the part 107 test. So it is different in that sense. You do still get a fancy sheet of paper. Yeah, overall, I'm happy I passed. With all that being said, I'm going to go and return home now. And then once I'm home, I will talk to you a little bit more about what exactly I did in preparation for this test to pass. I did use Remote Pilot 101's recurrent course to study for this test once again, but I also use a couple other resources, which I'll be showing you once I'm home. So uh, with that being said, here is Future Carson getting into that information. So as I already mentioned, I did use RemotePilot101.com as my resource for studying. And that is because I did purchase the initial and recurrent courses when I took my initial exam back two years ago, which is great. And that came in clutch now. And yes, I am wearing their shirt, Remote Pilot in Command but they have never paid me to say anything in my videos and they are not currently. And so I'm not being affiliated by them to say anything about them, but I am just bringing it up because I did use them as my resource. So in doing so, what I did basically on their website, when you go to the website, if you are a first timer here and you wanna you know, go through this as well, I do highly recommend it. I enjoyed the initial course and the recurrent course, I did feel that there were a couple things missing, but they are constantly updating things. And the recurrent test did just start for people like a year ago. So they are still, you know, updating their stuff. And through help of people like you and I, they usually get on that very quickly. So that is a plus. So you have access to the full part 107 course, and that is everything that will be on your initial test. I did go through the recurrent here. So this is one of their newer ones, of course, because this is a newer recurrent test. It's got a general unit, it's got operating rules, airspace classification, airport operations, emergency procedures, aeronautical decision-making, and maintenance and inspection procedures. If there was one thing that I have to say that they need to add to this, I feel like they need to run over what it means to take this recurrent test. Throughout all of these units, they didn't really talk about the recurrent test too much. Like, after I take the exam, do I need to go update anything through IACRA? Do I need to go and, you know, request a new certificate? Do I need to do anything like that? They don't mention any of that in any of this recurrent course. So if there is one complaint that I have about this, it is that in the recurrent course, it doesn't really talk about the recurrent course. Some of these are recycled lessons, which is fine because the original videos that they had for the initial course were great. So I have no issue with them reusing some of the same content, but they do have some newer videos in here just for the recurrent test as well. So in saying that they don't talk about the recurrent, they do, but they don't have like a specific video like they did with the initial test about what you do after you take the test. So if you've seen my initial video about my initial test, I did go and take Remote Pilot 101 notes about everything that is in the course and literally it covered everything that was said in the course pretty much. In fact, like the document here is 21 pages long. So if that talks about how long this course is, it's great. It does cover everything. And if you're taking good notes, you will pass the test. And I passed the first time, 
my very first test and I passed this recurrent test the very first try. So I am not at all worried that people won't be able to pass with the course. It's great and I highly recommend it. So with that being said and stop shilling about Remote Pilot 101, some other resources that I did use is I went and used this website right here. I used this initially as well for my initial test. This website is called 3dr.com and what it is is it basically has this huge bank of questions that will test you basically over everything that can be on the part 107. So this isn't just a recurrent test, but it was still a good refresher for myself to run through this and do all these questions. So after finding that 3DR resource, I also found this resource here by Rupert Law. Basically you scroll down the page, you get past all of his shilling stuff, and then there are these part 107 initial knowledge questions. And then right below that, there is the recurrent knowledge questions. And this test right here, quite frankly, has very accurate questions that you will find on the recurrent test. A lot of the things that were on this were on my test. So that was nice to have, and I was glad that I went through this. It's very easy. Um, you just go through and you click all your answers, and um, it'll tell you immediately if you got the question correct or incorrect, and it will tell you what was wrong about it and why there are better answers. So for the answers that there are two answers that seem like they could be the correct answer, this will explain why one answer is better than the other. So. It was a fantastic resource. I was very happy I found this. That is pretty much all I did for my practicing for the recurrent test. I uh, got all that studying in and it took me three days. I started on a Tuesday and I finished studying on a Thursday and I took my test on Friday. So I got all this done within four days. So if you have any downtime, I feel like you could knock this out in a weekend. So if you are wanting to knock this out quickly, I do believe it's possible. I passed with an 85%. I believe you guys can too. So in saying all this, I feel like that is pretty much it now. So with that being said, if you guys found this video helpful, make sure to share it around. Let your friends and family know. Other people that are looking to study for the part 107, Remote Pilot 101 is a very decent resource and it is one of the cheaper resources out there. So. It's fantastic and I found it very helpful for my initial and my recurrent tests. With that being said, that is pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below and also clicking that subscribe button down there to see future videos from me. Also, my last video should be up there and some random videos should be down there. It'll probably be the initial part 107 video if you haven't seen that yet. So with that being said, that is it for this video. See you in the next one. Peace.